Today we're, going to, today we're going to be looking at the mixer. Um, before we go to the mixer, let us just refresh your memory. We, we, several lessons ago, we spoke of the signal processing block, which was lesson six. And when we look at that, we mentioned there's five different um, processing types. So I don't know if you want to go there, or I just mentioned them. The five processing types, types are, the first one was... Uh, Tone processing, where we manipulate the EQ or with the timbre. We call that tone processing, and we looked at it quite in, in detail by addressing the whole equalizer business, okay? But then I mentioned there was other four. Uh, so I'll quickly run through the other four. The first one was intensity processing, which we do in a number of ways. We use, and we'll address one of them today. So intensity processing goes from a preamp to a a signal amplifier, like an amplifier for a loudspeaker. Then we spoke of um, routing, which is kind of taking a sound and taking it from one place and assign it to several outputs. We'll speak about that today. Then we the, the next one was um, effects, where we add effects to a signal, like reverb or delay, 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 delay. You didn't get that. Eh? And the third one, <laughs> The third one is time processing, where we have to add time to a signal just because we, we need to process it for a number of reasons. There's a number of reasons why we would do that. So these are the five, the five uh, types of effects, or processing, sorry, that we have available in our hands. Do you remember the, the whole uh, uh, discussion we had about manipulation? Our capacity to control sound we call manipulation. So these five, weapons we have in our, in our bag, in our toolkit, to manipulate and control sound, which is tone processing, intensity processing, um, effects, routing, and then time processing. These are the five. Okay, so if we understand that, what is a mixer? A mixer essentially is an electronic device or an electronic unit, let's rather call it that. Uh, this is a unit made up of several devices. Okay, so in this unit is made up of several pieces. The reason why we do that is that we could have uh, every, sing every single channel strip here is made up of several devices. Now, we could build this device, this, this, this one signal strip, with four or five different devices and connect them all one after the other. That's what you do when you do uh, recording at a really high level where you would have a really expensive preamp, a really expensive EQ, a really expensive compressor, and, or, and, 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 and eventually you have a stack of unit that does what one channel would do. However, it does it in a, in a much better way with a greater uh, accuracy and greater, um, uh, less, much less error and uh, greater detail and, so, and, 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 and greater quality, okay, obviously. So uh, the first thing I want you to understand is that the mix is made up of separate, of separate devices which are kind of built together, okay? That's quite important. The reason why this is important is that it is the reason why I first addressed the types of processing before I spoke about the mixer. Because if, if you don't understand that there, is a, the, there are different types of processing, the four different ways of controlling sound, the mixer doesn't make a lot of sense because then you get lost. There's so many knobs, and this is also this is also uh, not so bad. If you go to a digital mixer, it looks simpler, but it's more complicated because there's a lot of stuff you do not see. You only see a portion at a time. In a, in a most of digital mixer, you only see a portion of the whole architecture. In an analog mixer, you see everything at once. Everything you can touch or control is visible. In a digital mixer, isn't, and that's why a digital mixer can be a bit more confusing, or it, it is generally a bit slower unless you got you know it very well and unless or you have a very good digital mixer. But anyway, that's beside the point. It's not a discussion we want to go. Um, so the first thing I would like to to suggest is that 
or the first point I want to make is that every mix is made up of, of a number of devices. So to understand this, we have to take the a channel strip and kind of analyze each section. That's what we're going to do today. Now, if you understand one channel strip, you'll understand all of them because it's the same thing repeated in this channel, in this mix is 24 times. But once you understand one, it's the same thing, just 24 times, okay? So that's kind of the good news. The good news is you don't have to understand all of this, you just can understand one. If you understand one, you'll understand all of it. So if we can break it down to the unit, once you understand the unit, you understand the whole, okay? Now before I go and use this mix as an example, a uh, few important things I have to mention is that uh, in a mixer, the five different processing types can be found in some, all of them, in some, just some of them, okay? So in this specific one, the, we will find three types of processing, uh, which would be the tone control, which is this section, the equalizer. Then we'll have a routing matrix, which is constituted by this section here, and then we will have intensity, which is constituted by the gain potentiometer or the trim, this knob, and obviously the fader, which is a intensity or volume control. So in this specific mixer, we only have three of the five. If you had to take it, it, uh, a mixer with, which had a built-in effect, we would have four of the five. If you had an analog mixer, which also had some compression dynamic control, again, we will have four of the five. If you had a digital mixer, which can even give some delay, and not as an effect, by delay I mean actually adding time to a signal, which you can't get on an analog mixer, then you will have all five processing types in one machine. And um, digital mixer essentially tend to offer all of, all of that so that you have in one single unit everything possible, really. Uh, again, I, this is not, my lesson today is not about comparing digital versus analog and the quality and the difference, that's totally beside this conversation. Uh, I would do, I would bring up some differences for you to understand them, but I'm not uh, comparing them, okay, so that you, because that would sidetrack us, okay. So I repeat the five ones are tone control. The reason why I'm going to repeat them again is that because if you understand the concept of a processing type, the mixer much, makes much more sense because suddenly you have breaking down the channel strip in, in sections. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So it's, uh, the first one was tone control. We would have intensity. We have a uh, routing matrix. We would have uh, effects, which is not here. We would have delay which is also not here. Okay, so before we go any further, there's another concept we must kind of introduce before we look at the things that we haven't addressed yet, which today would mainly be the metric, the matrix, the routing matrix, and we will look at the preamp, so, and some other stuff like gain structure. But before we launch into that, we have to introduce a concept which is called signal path. We kind of seen it before, but I just want to, give you a definition because we're going to use that a lot today. So let me just define signal path out of my notes so that I can be accurate. Uh, 